Anthony Edwards had a lot to say to the media at All-Star Weekend regarding his status among the best NBA players. Edwards also had an even bolder take about players resting up during the regular season, saying, quote, All the guys sitting, resting, that's the only thing I probably don't like. Just play, man. If you 80%, you gotta play. I don't like all the sitting, missing game stuff. These people might have enough money to come to one game, and that might be the game they come to and you sitting out. End quote. Load management, as displayed by Kawhi Leonard of my Raptors in 2019 to secure them the championship, among other instances throughout modern day NBA history like with the San Antonio Spurs, can have its benefits. Whether or not the season should be shortened is a conversation for another day, I think there's way too many back-to-backs. But superstars with the option to take off games, quite frankly, have one of two options. A choose to give fans what they paid for by doing everything in your power to suit up for all 82, or B, see a massive hit to your marketability and general respect from the fans in the short term, but save your body for when it matters most and what everybody cares about in the playoffs. Regarding that load management, let's relate this to Kawhi Leonard's situation north of the border a few years back. While Kawhi was given his fair share of games off in the Raptors championship winning season, he would ultimately finish that 2018-19 campaign, having racked up a hefty 60 games played. Also, the Raptors had every piece around him and had continuity among other players from prior seasons built up. And it's safe to say that not just any team and situation is like or anything close to resembling what that 18-19 Raptor squad had going, with the trade from Marc Gasol completing the puzzle Pascal Siakam dropping near 30 pieces in the finals, and Kyle Lowry becoming the most beloved player in franchise history. So you need to use the 82-game schedule as a time night in, night out to build up the proper trust, rhythm, and overall chemistry, without significant reps built up within that grind. When pressure intensifies in the playoffs, a 15-man unit's flow is impossible to be built up. Going back to the quote from the intro, which you heard from Anthony Edwards, when you combine that statement with Ant's elite play, and this all makes the former number one pick one of the current faces of the NBA and a marketably popular player. That aforementioned statement from the intro not only proves that Ant knows the importance of suiting up for all 82, but that he's passionate about everyone else rightfully doing the same. Stay tuned for more on that topic later on. Anthony Edwards, though, has grown into one of the NBA's best slashing shot creators. The explosiveness of Ant's first step, combined with his ability to mix in the occasional stop on a dime pull up J, is what opens up a clear lane for him to get downhill so consistently throughout any given game. According to NBA.com, Edwards has scored the seventh most amount of points on drives to the basket this season despite having attempted the second fewest amount of field goal attempts on those drives in the top seven, listed as the 28th best player by ESPN in their preseason rankings, the third year pro out of Georgia has taken his game to the next level in 22-23. Ant's been dominating this year, posting averages of 25 points, six boards, and five dimes, having played in every single game for the Minnesota Timberwolves. Not only is Edwards top seven in points on drives to the basket, but his 437 points on pull-up J's ranks him 12th best across the association. Displaying his versatility on the other end, Edwards ranks number 6 among all shooting guards, surprisingly behind Hero and Harden by the way, in defensive rating. This play sees him first top lock Andrew Nemhart, then elusively play off him the slightest bit before blitzing the passing lane and taking it the other way. This man's a top defender, as is Jaden McDaniels of the Minnesota Timberwolves. They show that off by locking up Luka and Kyrie right here. But in terms of that transition scoring you just saw, only behind Giannis, LeBron, SGA, and Juice, Edwards is fifth among all NBA players in that category. Next play sees him rip the ball loose from Poku, use four left-handed dribbles, then go moving crossover to his right, Few possessions earlier sees another steal on Poku, and instead of another moving cross to his right for the finish, it's a full-on lefty attack while fending off Lou Dort. Ant's combination of speed off the dribble and blisteringly long strides make him incredibly tough to hold in check in the open court. 
Here, he shows you his improved muscle after a fluid catch and drive entry to take the rookie Matherin to school down low. From those beastly instant buckets, to Anthony's ability to gauge the defense in the half court working out of pick and rolls or isolations, those aspects of his game show you how well-rounded the man really is. As the pick and roll ball handler, Edwards is number 15, and in one-on-ones, he's number 7 among all players. If Ant continues to dominate like he has been over the final 25 games, and you want to see a heavy breakdown of that ISO and pick and roll scoring, be sure to splash that sub box. Regarding where Anthony ranks in the NBA overall, I believe as of right now, anywhere from number 8 to number 15, I think seems logical based on what this man gives you at an elite caliber on both ends of the court, both offensively and defensively, but you can't forget, Anthony is only in his third year, so expect him to keep leveling up the ranks over the next few seasons. But we're going to go back to Ant's point about load management right quick, and here was Stephen A's take on the situation. For generalization from a literal perspective, I started off the conversation by saying, if you're a fan, this is how it looks. And so what happens is when you have a, a player in the modern day age that's so mindful and cognizant of branding, how they are marketed, how they're perceived by the public, and they care about it on so many other levels, particularly as it pertains to business. Why is it that you seem oblivious to it when it comes to missing games, but you're sitting on the bench in street clothes? Some of them, not most, not all, but some of them looking like nail models, having a smile on your face when the paying customer came near to watch play and found out after they got there. You understand? When you see people, when you see that ass and they care, and you know and you can identify with their passion to play, their passion to be successful. That matters. And when you see something different from that, you notice it. So all of a sudden, it becomes a storyline for the doggies of the world and various others who are lamenting the absence of availability some of these players appear to have, but more importantly, how laissez-faire, whatever the word is, to, to uh, the comfort level that they have optically with missing those games. So you can bring it up from a literal perspective, no debate there. And he can bring up his point and I get it. But ultimately what it comes down to for that paying customer who's watching the game, at the end of the day, you're asking people to patronize the product. How much of a problem is load management in your opinion? For my last two uploads, the shoutouts are on your screen. For a chance at next video shoutout, leave your take on today's question.